Hi everyone, I'm Jiyuki and welcome back to possibly the last episode of our House of Hell playthrough. And from where we last off, off we have died several times. So if you haven't checked out the previous episodes, feel free to check out. Anyway, back to the story. Um, so we decided to backtrack to the part where we can grab the case because in the previous playthrough we didn't grab the case so this time we're going to head back to page 324 page 324 the underside of the table forms a close box and this arouses your suspicions you knock on it it is hollow perhaps it is a secret compartment you feel around underneath and sure enough your fingers find a small catch which releases a hidden drawer Inside this drawer is a leather box. But wait, what is that noise? You can hear footsteps outside the door. You will have to hide quickly. Will you grab the case and take it with you? Or will you leave it behind and close the drawer? Okay, so we are going to grab the case this time. So we are going to turn to 147. One hundred forty-seven. Where will you hide? Will you nip behind the curtains or quickly dive through the mirror? Okay, I think this time we're going to go through the mirror as well. So we're going to turn to page three. Okay, page three. You grab the box and walk up to the mirror. You put your hand through again and pull it back. It seems safe enough. You step through. Just in the nick of time, for as you disappear into the mirror, you hear the door open behind you. You find you, it, you are in a small room behind the mirror. You decide to open the leather box. Inside is a golden key, which you put in your pocket. Now turn to 160. Oh nice. 160. Behind the mirror is a small chamber, just large enough for you to turn around in. There are two doors in the chamber. Do you want to try the left hand door or the right hand door or will you rather step back through the mirror? We are going to, we are going to go and explore the mirror while we can. <laughs> okay so we have uh, three choices but we are going to choose between the left hand door or right hand door. We are not going to step back through the mirror. I think that's, that's how we get trapped. <laughs> Last time. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so I think between the two doors, I think I'm going to pick the right hand door. So turn to page 294. The door is locked. If you have any keys with you, you may try them in the lock. Do you have a golden key? If so, you can try it by turning to 10 if not turn to 204 so we have the golden key I am going to write the golden key now because we just got the golden key I forgot to write sun golden key ok so turn to page 2 no 10 The golden key fits the lock and turns. The door opens to let you into another small room. The dust and cobwebs suggest that this room is very rarely used, and it certainly looks fairly uninteresting. But in the thick dust on the floor, you notice one footprint and then another. Someone has been in here recently. The footprints lead towards the right hand wall around the door. Behind a loose stone in the wall, you find what it was that this visitor came to hide, a large cast iron key. You pick it up and examine it. It is heavy and fairly crudely made and has the number 27 cast on into it. You put this in your pocket. Nothing else of interest seems to be in the room, but you may add 2 lux points for this find. Now you must leave the chamber. Turn to 204. Okay, so we have a iron cast key. Cast iron key. Page 
last key with the number 27 cast on it and then we also add two lock points so our lock points uh, go back oh yeah it returns back to our initial so 6 plus 2 becomes 8 so it's back to our initial now that's good okay turn to 204 do you wish to try the other door or would you prefer to step back through the mirror? Hmm. You know what? We should... Now we got this cast iron key, we should immediately go and try it out. So yeah, should we try it out or should we explore? My only worry is that we reach a dead end in the mirror after finding the the key yeah so I think it's best to go and try it out first yeah so I'm going to step back through the mirror 349 I know I sound crazy but I feel like if I go explore the mirror any further I think we're going to reach like another dead end because in our previous life we know where the the, about the door which needs the key and I think it's this key okay 349 you wait until there is silence in the drawing room and step carefully back through the mirror into the room the close is clear you walk over to the door and leave the room turn to 131 131 you leave the room cautiously and look around in the hallway there is no one inside. There is a door to your left, which you may try by turning to 211. Otherwise, you may turn right and follow the hallway around. So I'm going to turn to 211. Oh wait, okay. 211, the door is locked and you will not be able to open it. You turn round and follow the hallway. Oh, I forgot about the locked door. Okay, turn to 58. Okay, 58. The hallway widens. You walk across to another hallway and continue in the direction you were walking until you reach two doors opposite each other. Will you try the door on the right or the door on the left? Oh, I'm not going to that number. I recognize that number. So I'm going to the door on the left. Turn to 323. The door is locked. The handle and lock are part of an ornate metal plate. Do you have a cast iron key with you? If so, deduct the number on the key from this reference number and turn to the resulting reference to open the door. Otherwise, you must try the door opposite and quickly because you can hear footsteps approaching from the hallway. Okay, so we have the cast iron key, so we're going to use it. They say to deduct the number. So, 3 to 3... Minus 27. One sec, let me let me try to uh, so. Okay, I hope I got this number correct. Sorry, I am trying to <laughs> think think how it's done. Oh okay. So I is two nine six. The key turns and the door opens. You step into the dining room. The long table is set for two with fine silver. A sparkling chandelier, chandelier festooned with candles lights the room. The walls are covered with plush red wallpaper. Full length curtains are drawn along one of the walls. You are prepared for your battle. A rope hangs down by the curtains. You can pull this if you you can pull this if you wish to ring for the butler, turn to 318. Otherwise you can check around the room for any signs for the signs of any traps. Mm. Let's okay. okay, let's just ring for the butler. <laughs> I I don't think 
would he set traps in the final room? I feel like if we check the traps, we might trigger a trap instead of... Okay, let's just ring for the butler because I feel like... I feel like if it's better with like the end boss, I don't think they'll pull any like fast ones on us. So, turn to three one eight. Three one eight. A few moments later, Franklin's the butler empties the dining room. He started to see you. You demand to talk to the master of the house, and he agrees to pass on your request. Ten minutes later, the Earl of Drama comes storming angrily into the room, with Franklin following close behind. They stand facing you across the table, watching you carefully. Why have I been disturbed in the middle of the night? He demands. You tell him that you know of the evil that goes on in the house, and that you are determined to destroy it. The two men look at each other, they nod and look back at you, then they step apart, and advance around the table towards you. The earl to your left and his butler to your right. You must choose quickly whom you will attack first. You will fight the earl first turn to 30, you will fight attack Franklin's first turn to 351. I am going to attack the Franklin's first, so turn to 351. You step towards the butler. He stops and takes a step backwards. You step forwards. Franklin runs round to the other side of the table. Franklin screams the Earl. Move in, man. Step out of deck. The butler twitches nervously. So we got two choices. Will you continue pursuing him or will you leave the cowardly butler for the time being and concentrate on the Earl? Okay, this is fishy. They are trying to ask us not to go after the butler, so we are going to go after the butler. So turn to 336. Okay. You catch up with the butler in the corner of the room, resolve your fight with him, and if you are attacking with the Chris dagger, add 3 points to your skill during the battle. We don't have the Chris dagger. So Franklin has a skill of 8, stamina of 8. When you have inflicted your first wound on Franklin's turn to 181. Okay. So let's go and roll for Franklin's. And Franklin's got a 6, so 8 plus 6 is 14. And then roll for us. We got 11, so we definitely inflicted the wound on him. So turn to 181. Ooh. 181. The butler screams as your blow strikes him. The man is obviously not the violent type, as the agony in his voice is certainly not warranted by your modest hit. His cry continues. It becomes deafening, and you are forced to step back and cover your ears with your hands. But this is not the anguish of an injured man. Steam begins to rise from the floor and it engulfs the butler. His expression changes from a scream to a vicious snarl and his eyes widen. A transformation is taking place. Before your eyes, the form of Franklin melts away and is replaced by a hideous demonic beast. Steam hisses from his mouth. His scaly skin is dark. His hands are now two vicious claws which slash the air before you. Its feet have become hooves, godlike hooves. You must add three fear points as you witness the creation of this demon from the depths of hell. So we got add three fear points. So yeah, and then if you are still alive, turn to 109 if you are using the Chris knife or 52 if you are not. So because we are not, we are going to turn to 52. But we're going to keep this uh, page in hand. So we're going to turn to 52. The Hell Demon steps forward and slashes at you with his claws. Catching your arm with such force that it breaks, you shriek and clutch your injured arm, now useless in battle. But your agony will be short-lived, for nothing you can do will defeat this unearthly creature. The battle and your life will shortly come to an end. So yeah. We, we did 
receive information that we need the Chris knife so we don't have so we actually we got the final bad ending so we can safely conclude that our adventure ends in a bad ending so now what if we did have a Chris knife so we are going to go back to the page and we are going to pretend that we have the Chris knife okay so if you don't want to uh, listen to the good ending you can skip straight to the outro I'll put the timestamps down in the description below so yeah for those who want to listen to the good ending the tr the final good ending here it goes if you are still alive turn to 109 if you have the Chris knife so we we'll, we have the Chris knife let's, let's just say that we have the Chris knife so what if lah so we turn to 109 can you defeat the demon which now stands before you if not, it will certainly kill you. But you have with you the Chris knife, the only weapon which will harm the creature. You may add 6 points to your skill score while using this weapon. Now resolve this battle. So the Hell Demon actually has a skill of 14 and a stamina of 12, which is very very high. So yeah, but we are not going to go through the battle because we are just reading through the good ending. Uh, if you win this fight, turn to 400. So we are going to turn to 400. Okay, so here's the ending, the good ending, the final good ending. 400. The creature howls as you strike the final blow. It totters on its hooves and crashes down on the table. As it falls, its flaying arms smash into a chandelier in the center of the room, scattering candles onto the floor. From behind you, another cry goes up and your other attacker, whom you have forgotten about completely, springs over to the table to hug the beast pitifully. You ought to kill both of them, but the pathetic sobbing creature hunched over the huge bulk is hardly worth considering. In any case, something else much more dangerous has caught your attention. One of the candles which was knocked from the chandelier has rolled across the floor and set light to the heavy curtains. The fire is spreading rapidly. You must escape quickly. Smoke is beginning to creep out of the room as you close the front door behind you. Walking down the drive, you glance back to see the fire ra making rapid progress through the ground floor. Flames are leaking along the wooden beams. In an hour or so, the place will be beyond rescue. From a safe distance, you watch the fire destroy the house. A fitting end, you think, for a house of hell. The end. So this is the good ending. But yeah, our playthrough ends in a bad ending, so yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for the House of Hell. I mean, for this playthrough, that is. And thank you for, for those who are, have been following this adventure. Thank you so much. Also, I would like to give a shout out to Geoff Harvey, who have created the background music used in this playthrough. If you would like to find out more about him, you can check the description for his YouTube. He definitely deserves more subscribers so please do check out his youtube channel and if you want to find more music that is composed by him you can also check out his pixabay so thank you sir for allowing others and uh, such as myself in using your music for our projects our content creation our videos and much much more i believe this wraps up our gameplay playthrough of this gamebook House of Hell and allow me once again to thank you for joining in this horrific adventure uh, in this House of Hell <laughs> thank you so much and if you would like to see more of this um, do let me know because if I want to continue with this uh, gamebook series, this fighting fantasy playthrough. I believe the next book I would like to try out would be the Forest of Doom because that's my favorite book out of the fighting fantasy series. And it's also a lot easier than <laughs> the House of Hell. So it'd be, I think it'll be a fun play. Anyways, that's it. If you do enjoy this gameplay, please consider subscribing to my channel. I mean, if we get lots and lots of 
uh, support for this gameplay, I might consider doing this in the future again. But for now, farewell and I guess I'll see you next time in the next video. Bye!